the pride of Great Ribbon, Lennox Newell. On the 8th of June, 2002, in Memphis, Tennessee, Lennox Lewis dominated and knocked out Iron Mike Tyson to prove that he was the greatest boxer of his era. A year later, he defeated Vitaly Klitschko, the next great heavyweight champion in one of the most entertaining fights of the 21st century. Via a six round technical knockout due to nasty cuts on Klitschko's left eye, Lewis retired as the best. However, it wasn't always destined to be this way and the career of Lennox Lewis was a roller coaster ride full of highs and lows on his way to greatness. Let's rewind to the start. Born in London, England, in September 1965, Lennox Lewis moved to Canada, aged 12, and soon found himself in the boxing gym and began his amateur boxing journey. Representing Canada instead of Great Britain, Lewis would have a glittering career in the unpaid ranks, notably winning a Commonwealth gold at the 1986 Games in Edinburgh, Scotland, and then two years later, he won what is the pinnacle of the amateur style boxing system by knocking out his American rival, Riddick Bow, and win Olympic gold in Seoul in South Korea, 1988. To the disappointment of many Canadians, Lennox Lewis opted to move back to the country of his birth and represent Great Britain in the pro ranks. He joined up with promoter Kelly Maloney, formerly known as Frank Maloney, and went on to win his first 21 contests with 18 of those wins coming by way of knockout. Along the way, he picked up the British, Commonwealth and European heavyweight titles before he earned a key breakout win against Donovan Razor Ruddock in 1992. This fight was to become the next mandatory challenger for the WBC heavyweight championship of the world. The WBC champion at the time was a man that Lennox had beaten in the Olympic final, Riddick Bowe. So the prospect of a rematch in the pro ranks was very exciting. Astonishingly though, Bo opted to relinquish the belt and publicly did this by throwing the famous green and gold belt into the bin. The WBC then declared Lennox Lewis their new champion. This was a setback for Lewis as although he was a world champion, he didn't win the belt in the ring and so was seen by many as not being the true world champion. What followed was a string of defences, a points win over Tony Tucker, a tough 7th round stoppage win against fellow Brit and fans favourite Frank Bruno and an 8th round knockout of Phil Jackson. Everything was going well for the man nicknamed the Lion but as the old saying goes, one punch can change everything in boxing, especially in the heavyweight division. His fourth defence against Oliver McCall, Lennox Lewis walked into a huge right hand in the second round of their fight. Lennox got up, but the referee felt he was in no position to continue and stopped the fight. This was a big upset loss and raised doubts about whether Lennox could ever be the best of this era of boxers. After the shock loss at the hands of Oliver McCall, Lewis asked McCall's trainer, Emmanuel Stewart, of the famous Kronk Jim, who had previous world champions such as the legendary Tommy Hitman Hearns to train him. And under Stewart's leadership, Lewis built on his technical skills and developed into a very well-rounded fighter. However, it would still take Lewis over two years to get another shot at the heavyweight world championship. Lewis finally became WBC mandatory challenger again in the summer of 1996 and the title holder at the time was the fearsome Iron Mike Tyson. However, like Riddick Bowe a few years before, Tyson did a similar move by deciding against defending the WBC championship and opted to fight Evander Real Deal Holyfield for the WBA version of the championship belt. Holyfield would go on to defeat Tyson via a stoppage victory. Lennox Lewis had to wait until the start of 1997 to earn his second chance to reclaim his WBC championship belt. Interestingly, his opponent was Oliver McCall once more, the fighter who had sensationally knocked him out 
years earlier. This was a perfect situation in Lewis's view to right a wrong that should never have been by defeating McCall once and for all. Lewis dominated the opening rounds and found a home for his trademark solid jab. However, McCall started acting very strangely in the ring. In the fourth round, he started disengaging, looking around the ring and appeared to be having a nervous breakdown and started crying. This forced the referee to stop the contest. The bizarre way in which the fight ended took the shine off the win and although again he had the belt, many were still unsure and questioning whether he was the best of the division with other big names having more famous victories at that moment in time such as Evander Holyfield. However, the fight against Andrew Galotta changed everything. Although Galotta had recently lost two fights to Riddick Bo, they were both via disqualifications and on each of these occasions Galotta was manhandling Bo, a fighter that many felt was the best heavyweight in the world at the time due to his recent win against Evander Real Deal Holyfield. Therefore Galotta was widely seen as a massive threat in the division and when Lewis destroyed Galotta inside one round it made people really start to take note. It was a huge statement win for Lewis. What followed was another string of good defences against the likes of Shannon the Cannon Briggs and then Lewis finally had his shot at the big time and to put his case forward for being the best heavyweight on the planet by taking on Evander Holyfield who had recently had high profile wins against Mike Tyson. Their first fight finished in a very contentious draw with many feeling that Lewis had done more than enough to earn a clear points victory. The contentious nature of the draw meant that an immediate rematch was inevitable and their second contest saw Lennox Lewis beat Holyfield via a points decision win. The fight itself was a closer and more intriguing fight than their first encounter with both fighters having moments of success but Lewis ended up doing enough to secure the win. This result saw Lewis become the undisputed WBC, WBA and IBF heavyweight champion of the world and the last heavyweight champion of the 20th century. He was also now seen as the man of the division for possibly the first time ever in his career. Title defenses against Michael Grant, Franz Boffer and David Tua followed and then in the spring of 2001, in what should have been another straightforward standard defense against Hasib Rockman, Lewis was famously knocked out in spectacular fashion in the fifth round. Lewis later claimed that he was underprepared and distracted with out of the ring commitments, such as filming the upcoming Ocean's Eleven movie. Lewis was able to secure an immediate rematch and later that year was able to get revenge with a spectacular knockout of his own and possibly the best one punch knockout of the decade. With the victory over Rockman, Lewis had become the heavyweight champion of the world for the third time, joining an exclusive group of heavyweight champions such as Muhammad Ali. The one known as the Lion also defeated every man that he had ever fought with his two rematch wins against McCall and Rockman. The only thing left to secure his greatness was a victory over Iron Mike Tyson. Although both were arguably out of their primes at this point, the fight would put to rest who was the best of their time. 15,000 spectators witnessed Lewis dominate Tyson by regularly peppering Iron Mike with jabs to set up big power shots. This is how the fight continued until the eighth round when Lewis dropped Iron Mike with an uppercut. Tyson got up but Lewis quickly finished the fight with a right hand and Tyson failed to beat the 10 count and was knocked out. This cemented Lewis as the best of the best of his era of fighters and the icing on the cake came for Lewis when he was in an entertaining back and forth, hard fought knockout win over the up and coming superstar Vitaly Klitschko before he finally called it a day. Lewis finished his career with a pro record of 41 wins 32 of those wins coming by way of knockout, one draw and two defeats, which he both avenged in rematches. He also won everything there is to win in boxing, notably in the amateur game, the Commonwealth and Olympic gold medals, and in the pro ranks, 
Lennox had won the British, Commonwealth, European and World Heavyweight titles. And other than perhaps Riddick Bowe, he fought and beat the very best of his era and built a legacy and a solid case for being one of the greatest boxers of all time. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like and subscribe. And until next time, have a great day and God bless my friends.